Hello everyone, this is Sam back today to bring you a video about salvaging. But as you know if you've been around the channel for a while, this is not my first time talking about that specific topic and it definitely won't be the last time I will be telling you all how salvaging is a great way to push your gold count forward when you're not quite used to the more advanced tactics that are flipping, forging and crafting. Salvaging is kind of easy, all you need to do is stick to some rules I will be explaining later in the video, but before diving into that subject, let's listen to the intro. And even before that, I have an announcement to make. The Patreon content is going to receive yet another overhaul, but prices remain unchanged. More about that at the end of the video. Also, to all of you who are watching and not subscribing, yes, the 85% of my viewership, please do remember to like, subscribe and toggle that bell. It helps way more than you realize and could push this channel even further up. The first thing to do when it comes to salvaging is to mention all the available salvaging kits, their costs and what they can do. However, this guide will assume that you will be progressing slowly but surely towards some if not all of the permanent salvage kits that we also call the salvage matics All kits have a varying chance to recover materials, rare materials and upgrades. Said upgrades also are split between kits that either salvage them or kits that will recover them. There are three permanent kits currently existing in the game, although since they are gemster items, one of them isn't always available. The yearly anniversary sales are usually a good time to get them, so keep an eye out. These three kits are the Copper Fed Salvage Matic, costing 800 gems, an equivalent to a basic salvage kit, the Silver Fed Salvage Matic, costing 500 gems when it is available, an equivalent to a Master Salvage Kit, and finally the Rune Crafter's Salvage Matic, which costs a 600 gems and is equivalent to Journeyman's Salvage Kit, except for its ability to always salvage upgrades, hence the name. Another kit we will be having a look at is the Black Lion Salvage Kit, as it is one that players can get from login rewards and as such will have its place in this guide. However, I am deciding to exclude the Ascended Salvage Kits since its uses are limited and you cannot acquire gear to salvage as easily as we otherwise will for the other salvage kits throughout this guide. So to sum it up, when I mention the copper fed, you can substitute basic kits. When I am using a silver fed, you can use a master or mystic kit that you can make in the forge with a basic, journeyman and master kit alongside some mystic forge stone. And finally, when I talk about the rune crafter, do not try to substitute a journeyman kit. You won't get the same effects, so it's better to simply downgrade to a basic salvage kit. Now that we have gone over the various kits, it is time to talk about their individual uses and what they will allow you to get from the many items you will probably salvage during your playtime. Earlier, we talked about materials, rare materials and upgrades. This is what you will receive each time you will perform a salvage, except that there are rates for each of these. Kits have their own rate, as we briefly mentioned, but the gear itself also has some. The rule of thumb here is to remember what gear salvages into what, be it based on rarity and level. Then the kits to use will become obvious, although we'll still go over them just in case. Salvaging weapons, armor or trinkets will award you some basic crafting materials at given rates. These materials are divided into 6 tiers and are salvaged as follow. Tier 1 drops from gear that is level 1 to 20, Tier 2 from level 16 to 35, Tier 3 from 31 to 50, Tier 4 from 44 to 63, Tier 5 from 58 to 80, and finally Tier 6 is given by gear in the 74 to 80 level range. This is where the chances of getting a rare crafting material comes in. Where tiers overlap in levels, your rare material is the higher tier crafting material. Here is an easy to understand example. 
I am salvaging a level 32 light armor with a copper fet salvage matic. I will get a certain amount of wool scraps based on the armor piece and I have a 10% chance at getting cotton scraps. Now that all of this is said and done, let's talk about the Globes of Ectoplasm. Salvaging rare or exotic gear of level 68 and higher will give you Globes of Ectoplasm at a specific rate depending on the salvage kit used. So now that we have covered which kits do what and how gear is treated when salvaged, it is about time to unveil the gist of how you can act in order to guarantee profits, whether small or big, when salvaging. The general idea is to salvage just about anything you can get your hands on, except for some specific cases where the item can be sold on the trading post for more than you would get at the bare minimum from salvaging it. This is the case for some specific exotics, generally the weapons and some triscuits, as well as some armor pieces. Rares you can most certainly always turn out a profit from by salvaging them. So now we can state the simple rules. If it is fine rarity gear or lower, give it a run through the copper fed salvage matic or default to basic salvaging kits. If it is masterwork rarity gear, you should use a runecrafter's kit or default to the copper fed or basic kit if you do not own it. The reason behind that choice is that masterwork quality gear and above have rules and sigils slotted, making the runecrafter slightly better due to the chance of getting charms symbols and lucent modes. Beyond that comes rare quality gear salvaged with a silver fed, mystics or master salvage kit in order to get that sweet 87.5% chance for a globe of ectoplasm. Lastly, we have exotic rarity gear where the main things you will look for is the price close to that of a globe of ectoplasm. If it is worth more than it, it is usually better to list it on the training post at one copper less than the current listing. Of course, there are some other specific rules when it comes to exotics, but we will discuss these in the next segment, as they require more research than a simple glance at the trading post to check the value. Salvaging for profits has two different schools. One that selects a few items to work on and aims at maximizing profits versus the time spent, and the other that simply goes for as many items as possible that are known or expected to be profitable and salvage them. For the first one, it is best to rely on a dedicated spreadsheet in order to pick what to work with. Indeed, items can go in and out of the profit range within a day and the best way for you to act is to have a buy order up at the price where you know that there will be a profit turning up, either on the materials you recover, on the eventual ectoplasm or insignia inscription recovery, or on the upgrade being salvaged or recovered. For this purpose, I have already designed a simple and efficient sheet for my patrons, available as usual at the lowest tier, dollar one. Now, about that second tactic I mentioned, the mass salvaging. For this matter, you either pick a specific level range and rarity and buy them up until a predefined price, as you can see in the video I am currently replaying here, it is quite easy to turn up a profit if you just mass salvage, as even coppers do add up. Another good way to handle this is to salvage the results from opening your unidentified gear. Although it is not always the best way to process these, it is a working one that will help you out when you are in a pinch for gold or simply when you are starting out on getting richer. Because at the end of the day, that is what salvaging is, the best way to make some cash when you're truly at rock bottom. That is also how I rebuilt my alt account from fluidly cleaning it to zero gold all the way up to the first few thousands I needed to start investing. Other methods I would recommend digging further into would be the salvaging of globes of ectoplasm, particularly valuable during the festival of the four winds, aka right now, and the salvaging of items in the gold to snipe grades, using the black line salvage kits, as it is a guaranteed recovery of upgrades. We often have upgrades that cost about the same price as the exotic they come from and these are good candidates for that method. Speaking about sniping upgrades, there is another way to do that which involves an expensive item that can only be gotten from the black lion chest or on the trading post. You guessed it, I'm talking about the permanent upgrade extractor. It allows you to recover the upgrade, just like the Black Lion Savage Kit does, however it does not destroy the item in the process, leaving you many ways to handle them differently. Also, the permanent upgrade extractor works at no cost 
whereas the Black Lion Salvage Kits cost a fair amount of gems to get, making it a non-viable plan if you don't already have a few stocks of them. What I think is a good plan when using the extractor is to have a spreadsheet, just as we said earlier, on more targeted salvaging. You want to extract upgrades that are very close to the value of the items you are getting them from, and then to go beyond in terms of profit, you either salvage what remains after the extraction, or forge it. I have used this method quite often to quickly generate stacks of Globes of Ectoplasm, as exotics are oversupplied since they drop from all the game modes as a guaranteed reward, be it in raids, events, or competitive modes. Right now, the Four Winds event is eating up the Ectoplasm supply, so it's a great time to get going. The last thing on today's guide is the Forge Folder tactic, which I will explain two variations of, the targeted one and the fully random one. The targeted one implies you will be buying up a specific weapon that would forge into a relatively expensive precursor and already nets you a profit, or close to a profit, by simply removing the upgrade. My go-to weapon for this method is usually Twin Sisters, as it is a sword with a superior sigil of force, meaning I have a good cashback on each extraction, plus it can forge into Zap, an overall good precursor, both in terms of price and demand. The fully random method makes use of the fact that the forge will give you a random output upon throwing in either 4 random pieces of gear or 3 pieces of gear and a mystic forge stone or ectoplasmic stone. The idea here is to keep forging for the chances of exclusive forge weapons, precursors or even a mystic infusion, which is kind of a jackpot in that regard. This concludes all the explanations and salvaging methods I wanted to cover in this video. I hope that throughout all of this, you have been able to learn something new or that you have deepened your understanding of the game's mechanics. Now, if you wish to know more about the game and become a rich player who can afford all the new items and skins, there are plenty other guides and tips on this channel. If you want to stay on top of the game, remember to subscribe and activate the bell for notifications on new videos. If you have enjoyed all the new content on the channel, do consider subscribing to my Patreon. For only $1, you get access to all the spreadsheets showcased in my videos and some extra, as well as a dedicated Discord channel where all questions get answered. To top it all off, I'm going to be working on further tutorials, both for Excel and for the spreadsheets I have made, as well as Patreon chats, where you will be able to ask questions directly during live sessions. You can choose to support me for more than $1, but rest assured that this base price will not change as I strongly believe that knowledge should be available to everyone. And now, we've gotten to the end of the video. If there is something you need further explanation on, don't hesitate to ask in the comments, and if you want to discuss things further, you can head over to our Discord server or simply DM me. Remember to like the video and comment for the YouTube algorithm and it's now time for me to wish every single one of you some happy trading and to get rich.